Hey, and I am live. Greetings, greetings, everyone. It is one minute to nine. I'm here early. Uh, and this is Wellington, New Zealand. And I am Saab Johal. I am the Tech Packer. Thank you for joining me here today. If you are here today, let me know. Drop me a note in the chat. I'm really keen to keep chatting with people as we go through the, the live stream today. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about, with a few other things, um, a little bit about tech that you use every day uh, and that you can't travel without. Uh, and maybe a little bit on the flip side of that is that tech that you don't really use every day, but you only use when you're traveling. There's a couple of things there that I want to mention too. So yeah, tech that you use every day that you probably couldn't travel without, or you make sure that you take at least something of that with you. Now, I am in Wellington, New Zealand. Uh, if you are here today, uh, hit me in the chat. Let me know where you are, what time it is, what the weather is doing, what you've done today, anything. This is just a really easy chat here for us today. Okay, it is um, whew, 21 degrees already here this morning. We're going through a little bit of a, a hot spell for New Zealand uh, at the moment. It's probably going to break in about two or three days' time. It's going to get a little bit cooler, uh, and that will be quite nice. I think everybody's kind of like looking forward to that. I'm just going to turn this tracking off so that it just stays in position and it's not going to pulse quite so much. All right, so one of the things that I can't do without when I'm traveling. Now, like I said, I'm not going to be talking about my phone or my iPad or my Apple Mac Mini or my laptop. Anything like that. Those things are kind of like givens in modern life. What are the things more recently or maybe some old school technology that you really like and that you really can't do without? It's one of the things for me that I think might surprise people that I've learned that I want every day. And that really helps me when I'm overseas as well is radio. Now, radio is such an old technology, and, you know, I've got, you know, even like an old radio here in my office right behind me, like an old school, like, ghetto blaster, like, just, to, I'll just get it for you. This thing. This thing is an old school double cassette tape recorder, but with, like, a four-band radio manual one, like, built in as well. This thing gets use every day, um, not normally from the battery, but normally plugged into the mains. But I really like radio. Now, that's just not to keep up with the news or anything like that, although that's kind of, like, important to me at various different times of the day. But, you know, old school music, if you're getting, <laughs> but also new music as well, depending upon where you live in the world, there's many, many different kind of like stations that you, you want to listen to. But, you know, in more recent times, get yourself a decent radio app for your phone. And it will, I think, change your life. Um, I love, um, I have a global player app, which um, has like LBC, Capital FM, Heart, all of the stations that I used to listen to or like listening to when I'm in the UK. And I can listen to here now on this app. Now, I think the really interesting thing about radio and radio apps is that not only does it kind of help you stay in touch with the world and what's going on, but it also, for me, helps to relieve quite a lot of homesickness if I'm off traveling. If I'm off traveling around the world uh, and I want to kind of like keep a little bit of my home comfort or understand what's going on at home and affecting the people who I love, then radio is really good for that. I can just tune in and listen to what's going on and have conversations about that with my loved ones too. Um, it's also just kind of like, you know, the sounds and the voices that you're familiar with every day. If you're, if you're away for an extended period of time, is a really nice way of just kind of like keeping in touch and relieving some of that feeling of homesickness or familiarity when you're in a really strange place. And particularly in those days where it's just kind of like not going as well as you would like it to. So I think radio can be a real comfort as well when you're away. If you've got a decent radio app, and even if you've got like little... Sometimes these radio apps have the ability to listen in podcast form later on as well. So there may be like a particular favorite show that you have that you can listen to on replay, which is, again, really good. The other side of that is that sometimes when I'm away, I discover new radio uh, in the place that I am. 
can remember the first time I went to uh, Australia. I think it's called Triple J. Love that radio station. It was really, really cool. And so when I was able to kind of like listen to Triple J when I was back in the UK, I really, really liked that. And it kind of reminded me of all the times when particular songs came on or when particular shows came on or particular things that I was doing when I was on holiday. So it's a really, really cool way to associate memories as well and to kind of like re-trigger those memories when you're back home, when you were away traveling. So radio is really cool for that as well. But also, you know, recently when I've been in Japan, I listened to NHK Radio, which is kind of the English language broadcast of what is going on in Japan at the time. So if there are like news events going on or popular culture events like festivals, they might have like news about what's going on, not just kind of like traffic and, and like transport news, but also just interesting cultural kind of background as to like what's going on where it's going on, all these kinds of things. So that was really cool as well. And I listened to, you know, after the earthquake um, recently in the, in the last few weeks in Japan, listening to NHK Radio just to understand a little bit more about how it was affecting people and so that I can check in and have the latest when I'm talking to my Japanese friends on, you know, Facebook Messenger and all the rest of it. So, yeah, having familiarity when you're going to, different places, but then bringing a little bit of those different places back home with you as well, uh, so that you can continue to connect with the friends that you've made overseas, but also to trigger those memories that you've made when you were having your like fantastic trip abroad. So yeah, radio, I think is really underestimated. I think radio is like fantastic. So like I said, if you're, if you're, I can't see anybody online here at the moment, but I'm hoping that people are going to watch this on replay as well. Channel's been quite quiet today. I have been surprised normally on a Sunday, my channel is quite busy with like views and stuff like that. But today seems to be quite quiet. I'm not sure if it's kind of like, you know, third weekend in January, people are kind of struggling a bit and hibernating a little bit. I know what it's like in the Northern Hemisphere, kind of this kind of like end of January. This is the, this is the hard yards. This is the tough bit of January. The latter half of January is always hard, particularly in a lot of the places in the Northern Hemisphere, you get paid on a monthly cycle. So you've had all of your Christmas spending and now you're kind of like paying that back or figuring out how you're going to pay that back and you're kind of tightening your belts and really not going out much. And, you know, if you're living in particular places in the Northern Hemisphere, the weather is pretty atrocious too. So, yeah, I understand that totally. It's hard in January in the Northern Hemisphere for many people. Okay, moving on. Next up, what do I use at home now? that I like to take traveling with me. Now, here's one that has surprised me, eSIMs. So eSIMs are a new innovation. If you don't know about eSIMs, you can kind of look them up. But briefly, if you've got a kind of like a newer phone, you don't now have to put a physical SIM in your phone. In fact, the recent iPhones over the last couple of years, there is no physical SIM tray in the USA. Everybody has to use eSIMs. Now, the interesting thing about eSIMs is that you can have multiple providers on your phone. It used to be that if you wanted to have multiple providers, you had to buy a particular kind of a phone, a dual SIM phone, or a phone that had a dual SIM tray in it or could be adapted to have one. Nowadays, you don't need a dual physical SIM tray to have multiple providers. You can have eSIMs. You, I think for many phones now, you can have up to five different eSIM providers. Why would you want an eSIM provider? Well, you may want to have not only the kind of like the data plan or the voice plan for the place that you're going to visit, that's always what you've kind of like wanted to do when you have, you buy a physical SIM in the place that you're going to be. But also you want to keep in touch with the people or your business or your just your regular contacts back at home. Okay. So maybe not that you want to use the voice plan, or the data plan, but you want to be able to receive text messages or at least be notified that there's a voice message there for you. Or if there's an emergency, you want people to be able to call you. And you know that like if you get if you receive that phone call from that number, that it's important. You don't want to have that number out of action because you've taken it out of your phone and you put your travel physical SIM in. Now, you know, you could just kind of like, you know, make sure that everybody important has your new physical SIM number in the country that you're traveling to, but you know, it's an extra hassle. If you have an eSIM, what you can do is you can say, hey, keep my primary number for receiving and making phone calls, my first SIM. 
And then for my secondary SIM, the one that you've just bought for traveling, run all my data off that. And so that's really cool. And that's how I've used it when I've been in Japan. My provider in the UK that I usually use, that I have a SIM with, that I have an account with, they've just introduced eSIM. So the next time that I go in April, I will be activating and wiping out my physical SIM. That's no longer going to be necessary. I'm going to have that as a permanent second line on my phone, on my iPhone. Uh, and then that eSIM will, I'll be able to switch that to um, data, text, and even primary messages, but still be able, primary phone number, but still be able to receive calls on my sec on my primary sim i'll just switch them over when i'm uh, when i'm there so i'm using sim now i've used bne sim before you may have seen a video about e-sims about that and that th they're cool they're really good and the interesting thing about bne sim is that or any provider that you might use is that often they'll have deals in your country of origin which might be better than your actual provider your primary provider so for a couple of months i experimented with just using data from an eSIM, which was kind of like a little bit cheaper than using or getting data from my New Zealand SIM provider. And so I downscaled my New Zealand SIM provider to have like minimal data. And then I added on my eSIM and I said, hey, phone, use that as my data when I'm out and about. And that actually worked quite well for me. So there's different ways that you can use it. Now, you may have seen on my community post a few days ago, I found a really cool offer for like when I'm in Japan, which beat everybody. It was 10 gigs for six US dollars. Uh, it was, <laughs> that's how it worked out. So yeah, it was really, really good deal. Um, so go to my community post because that deal is also available for US as well. So where it is that you may be traveling to in the near future, have a think about eSIMs because not only have I used that traveling, but I've also used that at home too, and it's been really effective. Okay, so that's two we've covered so far. Radio, eSIMs. What's third on my list? Third on my list is, seems really silly, but just having a phone stand. So yeah, we talked about, well, we're not going to be talking about phones, iPads, or computers, but this tiny little clip here, I use this every day. I use this like when I'm kind of like maybe stopping for coffee and I want to, you know, just have a look at my phone or just kind of like browse the internet or select a few things. This thing fits nicely on my iPhone here and I can use it as a little stand and it angles up to me. So this thing I use every day when I'm at home anyway. If I wanted something a little bit more flash, look at this one, this metal stand here. So a nice counterbalance and it can. This is on just by Just Mobile. It's on my channel, uh, and it also um, has this extendable here. You can make this a lot taller too, if that's what you want. Now this, and it kind of goes landscape like that too. And you can do the same thing with this. Like seriously, two dollar clip that I picked up somewhere, don't really know where. But these phone clips are really, really useful. You know, sometimes if you're traveling alone, you are kind of like in a place. You're kind of grabbing noodles or something like that. You don't really want to necessarily, or you can't find a place to prop up your phone to have a look or whatever it is. You may be planning what it is that you're going to do next after you finish your noodles. Having a little clip like this, that's really light. It just pops in your backpack or in your pocket. Really, really handy. Now, a lot of people have these kind of little kickstands that you can like fit onto your phone. I don't have one of those. I find them annoying. I don't like the feel on the back of it, but I do value having a little clip. So having a phone stand, I think it actually is something that I use at home and I definitely have missed when I have forgotten to pack it uh, when I've been overseas. So yeah, that's my number three. Having a tiny little phone stand is really quite cool for when you're just grabbing a meal or a coffee and you're just kind of planning what it is you want to do next or just checking on Instagram or loading stuff up, whatever it is you're doing. Hmm. I should turn this this way around. This is a one of my branded mugs now, as well as this T-shirt. It's quite good. I quite like it. Uh, but it's really hot in the office today. So if you're watching, let me know who you are. I have no one chat yet. Let me just type something in here. I'll just put a hi. Where are you right now? Always curious to see where people are from when they're jumping in on the, uh, on the chat here for my live stream. Okay, what's next? So we've covered radio. E-SIMs, phone stand, next. 
Hmm. AirPods. AirPods I carry everywhere with me now. AirPods are just a really, really good way of just kind of having a little bit of kind of, you know, delivering that radio into your into your head, <laughs> into your headspace, but also just a little bit of kind of like privacy, isolation. Sometimes that's just what you need. Or just walking along, sometimes you've got a little tour guide, you're listening to something, a little podcast that you found about that local neighborhood. It's a really good way of immersing yourself. It sounds sounds weird, but it's kind of like it's a really good way of immersing yourself in the place that you're in. If that podcast is relevant, you know, if it's like a cultural history or news report or something that's going on around the place that you're in. I love listening to podcasts when I'm walking. That's really, really cool. I don't listen to them all the time, but I really, really like that. And music as well sometimes too. But I really like on the AirPods, I like transparency mode. So transparency mode means that it kind of like you can still hear what's going on in your outside environment, which is kind of important, you know, particularly if you're in a busy place. I don't know if you've ever been to Vietnam. For Vietnam, you have to stay very frosty indeed uh, when you're kind of like crossing the road. There's no way you can have your attention divided because it could end in absolute disaster. There are so many scooters, there's traffic. And Vietnam is like there's a lot of motor traffic, but other places too, traveling to India, anywhere in kind of like Southeast Asia, you have to really stay frosty when you're on any kind of like public road. So transparency mode is really good for that. But in fact, I just remove them completely when I'm, when I'm in places like that. But AirPods are just fantastic as well. But the other thing that goes in tandem with that, which I only use when I'm traveling, I only use when I'm traveling, is this little device, the AirFly. Now, I am just about making my um, video of the AirFly Pro long-term review. I've had this for a year now. Um, and this thing is absolutely fantastic. I don't travel anywhere now on a plane without taking this. Um, long haul, mainly, medium long haul. Anywhere it's got an in-flight entertainment system because this thing is perfect. Once you pair it, once I, I found, once I've paired this with my, with my AirPods Pro, um, not only can I listen to the in-flight entertainment system brilliantly with my AirPods, I can switch seamlessly then between the in-flight entertainment system because I don't want to be watching that all the time and my own content on my iPad or my um, uh, on, or my phone, which is just fantastic. It also means that, you know, I, I don't know about you, but when I travel, I like the aisle seat. I like being able to get up, get to my bag when I want to, but I also like to be able to get up and have a stretch around as well. Um, that, that's really important to me. But the downside of being in the aisle seat is that if people inside you in the middle seat and on the seat by the window, if they want to get up, then if you're wired into the, your in-flight entertainment system, then that's a real pain because you have to unplug it, pause it, get out of the way for them to get out and then do the same thing when they go back into their seat. And they could be off for a long walk, so who knows when they come back. You're kind of like constantly on waiting for them to come back and ready to hit pause. Whereas this way, I can just kind of slip out of my seat, keep my eyes on my screen. It's still being beamed into me, and I don't have to pause or do anything like that unless I really want to. So that's really great. I really like that. That's more valuable than you think it's going to be. Um, I think it's really fantastic about having the, the AirFly delivering the sound straight into whatever Bluetooth headphones you're, you're doing. Now, the AirFly Pro can also handle connecting up to two devices, two Bluetooth devices delivering the same audio. If you don't need that, then the AirFly SE might be good enough. Uh, has slightly fewer features, but if you're just using it for broadcasting an in-flight entertainment system into your ears, the AirFly SE is perfect. So that's what I really, really like these days. Listen to my AirPods, use my AirPods Pro, a lot just because of the convenience, just because of the, the size factor. And also the really nice thing is that they fit inside this little bag that the AirFly comes in. So I, I can't, this by itself would be really easy to lose, but having it in the bag and it comes with the little, little USB A to USB C kind of like connecting cable, having that in the bag with the manual as well, in case I forget how to do something, is really cool. I really like this. So the AirPods Pro that I have or whatever Bluetooth headphones you have, plus the AirFly, is another thing that I use a lot at home, but also I have a travel kit around that too. I'm just going to cross these off. So that's another two there. Okay, so that's AirPods, AirFly, 
eSIM, radio, phone stand. What else do I travel with? Or what so what else do I use at home that I also take traveling with me? Uh, next one. Now, this is I said I wasn't going to talk about iPhones or iPads and computers, and I'm not. But what I am talking about here is storage. <coughs> this is the Samsung T7 SSD. This tiny thing, which doesn't require external power, is two gigs. So, what am I talking about? Two terabytes. Two terabytes of, of data able to be stored on here. Now, I've got another one here, which I haven't opened yet. I know I did another live stream where I hadn't, hadn't done that. Oh, Happy New Year to everyone, by the way. This is my first live stream of 2024. The last one I did was on New Year's Eve. So Happy New Year, everyone. I hope it's going well for you all. This one, the portable SSD T7 Shield. So it's just a tiny bit bigger than this one that I've just shown you. But it's a little bit more robust for, like, dust proofing, shock proofing, all the rest of it. <coughs> oh, I have a frog in my throat. I need a little bit more tea. So the reason that SSD is important is because if you are capturing kind of like a lot of footage, maybe you've got, you know, a Go3 with you, which has got internal storage, but you're not able to uh, expand on this internal storage. So this, this one is the 64 gig black version that I've got. Or you may have the, the, the white version here, the Arctic white version. This is a 128K version, gig, sorry, one that I've got here you want to be able to kind of like clear that and you maybe you haven't finished with that footage you don't necessarily want to delete it but if you have got your kind of like computer with you or your ipad with you you can manage that footage so long as you've got an external ssd <coughs> or enough room on your ipad or whatever to, to kind of offload it now you don't necessarily want to be filling your ipad or your laptop memory with like all this footage that you've got so you need somewhere to put it so having external storage is really, really handy for that. You want something that's kind of fast. SSD is really fast. Um, the SSD T7 I have found to be really fast and it works really well with other apps that I use, particularly LumaFusion, which is what I edit with. So yeah, for me, even if you've got kind of like the Ace Pro or if you've got a GoPro Hero 12, I've got that somewhere, it's not here, it must be on my desk. If you've got the Ace Pro or GoPro Hero 12, you want to be able to kind of offload your SD card, either swap it out or get the footage off here and then um, put it somewhere so that you can process it later uh, or store it later for, for using later on. So for me, I, I use the SSD a lot when I'm at home, but I also want an SSD for when I'm traveling. And it's really, really handy. And I don't have that kind of like SD card anxiety anywhere near as much <coughs> if I know that I've got external storage with me. So I don't know about you. Is that something that you find that you get a lot, that kind of like SD card anxiety? Because, you know, finding a good SD card can be a bit tricky these days with so many fakes out there. So when you do have good SD cards, they're not cheap. You know, if you're buying like a 256 or 512 gigabyte SD card, they're not cheap. Um, so you want to be able to kind of reuse and recycle those as much as possible. You don't necessarily want to have a file of those that you take around with you. So having one of these is actually a really cost-effective way of making sure you've got enough storage and it's really small and light as well. So I really like having portable SSD cards to, to carry away with me. Mm. Perfect. All right, so external storage, SSD. Let's come come back to something a little bit more. What else do I use quite a lot? Now, I don't use this as much at home, but I will be using a lot more traveling. And that is a wireless mic. Now, wireless mic, um, you know, there's so many on the market now. You know, DJI just put out their new DJI Mic 2, which came out kind of like under the radar a bit with the, with the uh, Pocket 3 as part of their creator pack. People kind of like, well, hey, what's this? There's no instructions with it. There's no manual with it. So this must be coming out soon. And this must be kind of like something that Pocket 3 creators 
um, are kind of like getting a bonus. And, and, and I'm sure that quite a few people bought the Pocket 3 because it's the only way to get hold of the DJI Mic 2 at that time. So there's lots. There's the Rode mics as well. There's kind of all sorts of like the party ones like um, Hollyland have got their new one, which is just kind of like the size of a button, which actually looks quite interesting. I'm quite interested in that one. Um, but what I have been using, what I will be using when I'm traveling is this full Amex 5, which is, um, the, again, there's a video on my channel. It's two units plus, plus a transmitter, plus also got USB-C and lightning adapters in there as well. I don't know if you could see them just about there. Yeah. So this is going to be part of my travel kit because when you're out and about traveling, you know, what you don't want is really bad audio. Um, you may have like the best visuals and you may be doing a silent video using those visuals in, in, in a way, kind of like telling a story where you're going to be using a voiceover. But having the option of being able to use decent audio when you're out and about, for me, is quite important. Um, that's always going to be an option that I want to be able to use. So having a wireless mic, even though I use wired mics in the studio, really basic, like a, it's a Rode video mic micro that I use for my like normal videos, which I think is just kind of good enough. Like maybe one day when I'm a little bit bigger, I might invest in a slightly better mic. Um, but everything is kind of, as I say, everything is done off, off my iPhone on an ultra portable setup. And with the with the 3.5 millimeter to lightning adapter, that works for me. That works. Mm. Oh, tea is good for my throat, which is very dry today. It's very dry in here. Just looking at the dog who's just at my feet quietly listening. Um, so yes, a wireless mic is something that I use quite a lot. So let's take that off. Next up, you may have seen. Uh, on my community post yesterday, I was asking people about their smartwatches uh, and did they use them when they were traveling? Is that something that they were interested in? And, and I was curious about how people use them. Now, for me, I'm going to be putting up a video soon about how I use my Apple Watch. And about it, you, but if you're watching this on replay, if you're here with me right now, do you have a smartwatch and how old is it? Because what I use is an Apple Watch Series 5. Now, we're quite a long way past that now in the Apple ecosystem. We're on Apple Watch Series 9. Series 10 is coming out this year. I never had owned an Apple Watch before the Series 5. It took me a long time for Apple to convince me that it would be worth buying something which is pretty expensive to take advantage of their ecosystem. And that's really the only reason why I got it. Because before that, I had... Fitbits and Fitbits were good. And then suddenly I can't remember exactly the details. Fitbit and Apple had like a falling out and then Fitbit made their data inaccessible to a lot of the way that Apple kind of re reported it in their Apple health apps and all the rest of it. So Fitbit and Apple were not as tightly integrated as they used to be. And I was like, well, hey, I mainly use my watches for kind of fitness tracking. Um, so I was using a Garmin as well. So I left Fitbit and I went to Garmin when I started running kind of like quite seriously because anything else wasn't able to last in terms of like the battery power to get me through a marathon or an ultra marathon. And even then, like the forerunner, I can't remember what it was. It was like a real basic forerunner from Garmin was, was only just about able to do that. Anyway, long story short, Apple Series 5 was the first Apple Watch I got. Now, battery health on this which is, you know, considerably old now, four years old, had dropped down to about 76%, something like that. And it was not lasting through a day. I mean, they barely last through a day anyway if you're doing any kind of activity. But I had to put this on low power mode and it was not even getting through a day then. So long story short, I eventually got it. The battery serviced by Apple uh, and it cost 220 New Zealand dollars, which is, I don't know, about 160 170 US dollars, which I thought was a bargain to get essentially a new Apple Series 5 back from Apple because there are a few things on the Apple Series 8 and 9 which I kind of like, but I'm not willing to pay the extra for that. So for me, the Apple Watch Series 5 has been great. Having said that, 
I do love my Apple Watch and I use it a lot more than I thought I was going to. When I was without it for a week, when it back when it went back for servicing, it was fine. But it kind of made me realize how much I do actually use it. Now I do use it a lot with the Apple Fitness Plus kind of like app. Um, when I'm exercising in front of the TV on the big screen, or when I'm out walking, or when I'm out running, you know, I love the data that I can look at afterwards and analyze what it is that I've done. But also, you know, there are opportunities that I'm missing, such as using it for mobile payments. Now that's because New Zealand's been really slow. New Zealand banking system has been really slow, but they've only just now caught up in the last month so that my bank now is compatible with Apple Pay, which now this, this becomes pretty good in terms of being able to use it for mobile payments. What I'm interested in is would I be able to use it in Japan for uh, trans transport payments as well without having to change region? Will it just become available to me when I am actually in Japan? So if you know the answer to that, let me know, because from what I've read, I would have to actually change my Apple Watch's region settings. And the disadvantage of that is then I lose all my subscriptions. Your subscriptions don't carry over and I can't afford to lose those ones because some of them are like lifetime subscriptions that I've paid for and I don't really want to lose that because I, I think if I then change region back, I, I think it's hard to connect it back in again. So yeah, if, if you know, let me know. But the Apple Watch is something that I use every day. And the Apple Watch is something that I have used in Japan a lot uh, or in the UK a lot. The Apple Maps is now really well integrated with the Apple Watch. So for GPS um, uh, map mapping and, and kind of like turn taking and finding your way around, it's really good. Having said that, in Japan, I have found Google Maps a lot better than Apple Maps in terms of being able to like plan your transport as well. So I do tend to use Google Maps more when I'm in Japan, when I'm in London or in the UK. Apple Maps is just fine and it works really, really well for me. So the Apple Watch, that's something that I use a lot in my everyday life. And it's something that I would really miss, I think, if I went traveling without it. So that's the next one. We're rattling through these. Next one up, something that I use every day, which I would want to take traveling with me as well. Again, really basic tech. And that's going to be like a four-way or a six-way adapter for plugs with hopefully USB ports built into that as well. And even better, a surge protector built into that as well. Now, why is that important? Well, you don't really want to be, but firstly, I use them a lot, right? So I have a lot of electrical appliances, so I plug, and I don't have enough electric sockets in this room or any room, really. Most, most, Houses are not so modern that they kind of like come in wired with an office with, you know, like 12 electricity sockets in the wall. You're going to have to have some kind of like multiplier adapter somewhere. So having a multiplier adapter with a surge protection as well helps me to protect my investments in case there is some kind of like problem with the electricity grid and there is a power surge. That helps to protect my gear. I would value that protection when I'm away as well. Now, the thing about traveling is that often in the rooms that you're in, Often if you're staying in like, you know, relatively inexpensive or cheaper hotels, they don't tend to have a lot of electricity sockets in them. Like sometimes they don't even have an electricity socket anywhere near your, your bed. So you can't keep your phone close to you or recharging it. And it has to be kind of like on the other side of the room. Even worse, if you're kind of like young and you're staying in dorms or, or whatever, not necessarily young even, uh, if you, even if you're staying in dorms, that can be a problem, right? So... You want a multiplier. And then what you want is you want to just buy one adapter for your multiplier. So then you're not walking around with like six adapters with all the for all the plugins, uh, power blocks that you need to plug into the wall, right? You just need one and all the others can plug into the adapter for your local country, which then you've adapted for the country that you're going to travel in. Okay, so that's a really good multiplier effect of having a four-way or a six-way or an eight-way kind of like plug adapter. Now, the other way of, of coming around to that is these days you, what you can get is now this is um, a little one here that I'll just show you. Um, I, this is so small, but, you know, I've talked about this on my, on my channel before. If you look at my video on 50 things for under, sorry, 12 things for under, how did I open this? 12 things, oh, there it is. 12 things for under $50. This is one of the things I mentioned. It's not exactly the same one, 
Uh, this is um, my wife was putting through a Timu order for stuff for the kids. Uh, and she said, is there anything you need? Because I need to uh, get something. She doesn't talk like that. She talks much nicer than that. Don't know why I did that voice. Um, is, there anything, is there anything that you need that um, is worth this much money? Because then, like, I get free posted. So I said, yeah, sure. Give me one of these. So this is a smart travel adapter. Uh, which you know adapts for various different countries that you you may be traveling in, but it also has two USB C and two USB A ports built in. Now this is a two thousand watt adapter as well, so you can charge a laptop off this. And this this for me was like cool, right? So I don't normally travel with a laptop anyway. I travel with an iPad, but then this will charge my iPad quickly. Um, so I don't necessarily then have to take away my power block for my iPad, which is again a win for me. Like the fewer of those that I can have to travel with, the better. So this is going to come away with me, and then I'm just going to monitor how much I'm using my power block before I dump it completely. And then when I do, I'll make a note of that, and then that becomes then my kind of like standard default travel kit. So yeah, power blocks, adapters. You want to kind of minimize those. So taking like a four-way or a six-way adapter block with one adapter for wherever it is that you're going to be traveling to then helps to solve the problem of not having enough power sockets whenever you're traveling just like in your home office as well and then what you can do in order to multiply that effect is to get one of these smart adapters with a whole bunch of built-in usb ports as well now again depending upon where you're staying you may have usb ports built into the power options in your room but often you don't so and that, that can be a problem all right, so we'll put that away. Four to six way surge protection, USB connectors, done. And so the last one that I wanna talk about here today, because doesn't seem to be that many people online here today on my channel, that's fine. Everybody's busy, you've all got lies, <laughs> fantastic. Um, so what I've got is, what I wanna talk about is AI. Now, AI is something that has been around for, I don't know, ChatGPT has been around for about a year now, I think just over a year. Um, one of the things I've noticed is that in some shape or form, I'm using AI pretty much every day now. Now, that might be kind of like light touch sort of like stuff where I've got a little app on my watch here. It's like a watch chat GPT thing where I can put in little queries and it'll feed it back in onto my watch. Um, now, you'll see a video on that called Watch GPT on my um, on my channel. And it's actually really good. Um, and I can put in voice queries into this as well, and it will speak it back to me, which is great, really, really good. Uh, and with this, I can use Chat GPT 4 as well without paying any extra. Now, I've, I've never pushed the, the limits of those queries or how many of those I can do a day, because I don't use it that often, but when I do use it, it is actually really, really useful. So I use that a little bit. And to be honest, I haven't tried using this when I'm overseas, but I will do next time I'm in Japan, that's for sure. Um, so the other thing that I have used a lot over the past, I think like eight months now, and I've been trying it and testing it, and I'm currently making a video about it, and it'll be out on Friday this week coming. And that is an app called Audio Pen. And you hear about it here first, you lucky live stream viewers uh, who are here now or watching it on replay over the next few days, watch out on my channel for AudioPen because I think it's a fantastic app. It's really, really good. It's not a transcription service. It's really good at that. But what it can do is summarize within seconds, messy verbal vomit that's come out of your mouth into a structured form that can structure it in a way that you want. So you can give it a sample of your own writing and preset it up and say, hey, whatever I say, write it out in this form. And you can use that for like it, your emails or whatever it is that you're writing on your day-to-day -day kind of like basis. Or if you're traveling, it really comes into its own. I mean, you could write a whole public travel blog this way. You can either kind of like dump your voice notes out at the end of the day and it will come up with some kind of written format for you. Or you can just be doing this as you go through your day rather than leaving it till the end. Spend a few seconds just creating a vo voice note, get audio pen to write it out for you. And at the end of the day, you can just compile that with some small videos and some photos 
and bang, your travel travel blog is done in like 20 minutes, whereas it may have taken you like an hour. And 20 minutes is pushing it to the outside. That's like including like getting all your photos and videos into the right place of formatting on whatever blog that you're going to use because the text is done in seconds. So audio pen and AI generally is something that I use now every day and I wouldn't travel without it. I think audio pen is, like I say, it's not a query based AI, but it's using your own content and then organizing that in a way that you normally talk, how you normally write. And so this for me is like, has been an absolute game changer. This is like a very small developer has come up with this. Um, and I, I love him. Um, I forget, um, uh, Louis is his first name. I forget what his last name. I think he's based in Goa in India. He He's great. He's a really, really good developer, very attentive developer. Um, so if you if you get a chance to tr check out Audio Pen, wait till Friday, because I've got a discount code for you. There is a free plan, which is like great, but you can get so much more out of the Prime plan. So watch my video, wait for that coming out on Friday, because I think you're going to love it. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to using it when I go traveling. Uh, and I probably will kind of like maybe even resurrect my Substack for a few little daily vlogs, uh, a daily sort of posts on there as well, linking it to my sabjohel.com. So if, you, if you're ever interested in like getting more of a, uh, a written summary of uh, the videos that I do on my YouTube channel, go, come to sabjohel.com and, and that's where you'll find them all. Well, not all, the more recent ones because I've kind of like revamped my whole website recently which has been a completely different story and a completely different live stream all right so who's here let's check in because i'm going to just go through what it is that i've talked about already and if you want me to talk any more about it now is your chance to get me to talk some more about it so first we talked about tech that i use at home that i wouldn't travel without first is radio okay so radio radio apps second e-sims e-sims is something that i use at home as well as when i'm traveling now Third, phone stands, really cheap ones like this little clippy here, which fits around my iPhone 13 mini brilliantly, or slightly more flash ones like this one, which is nice solid grade aluminium, which I use as my home stand here on my desk. Uh, then we talked about uh, external storage SSDs and how important they are for me at home, but also when I'm traveling for all kinds of different reasons. We talked about AirPods, wireless headphones. AirPods are really cool for me, AirPods Pro, because they fold up really small. But also something that I don't use at home for um, as tech. I only use on international flights, but it's an absolute lifesaver. Now, you can get 25 hours out of this. I can go to Japan and back without having to charge this up. And I use it almost all the time when I'm on the plane. And it's absolutely fantastic because it doesn't run out of juice. It's really, really good. I can't recommend it highly enough, really. I said uh, my long-term review on this is coming out in the next sort of like two or three weeks or so. Uh, Apple Watch, we talked a little bit about that. Apple Watch is something that I've come to love. It took me a long time for Apple uh, to convince me to buy one. So this is a Series 5. And I have renewed the battery on this rather than upgrading to a Series 9 because I don't see too much added value between the 5 and the 9. But not having one and a Series 5, absolutely massive value. So... Do you can pick up a second-hand one, Series 5, Series 6, Series 7? I would say do that. If you can make sure that it's like decent refurb, has got decent battery health, I would thoroughly recommend, if you're in the Apple ecosystem, pick up one of these. If you're more of a runner, long-distance runner, then I think Garmin's are still the way to go unless you want to shell out for an Apple Ultra or Ultra 2, if you can still buy those now with... The the, the current stuff that Apple's going through around their blood oxygen monitoring and how they look like they've breached some kind of copyright, allegedly. There you go. Mm. Then we talked a little bit about uh, adapters. So four-way, six-way, eight-way plug adapters with built-in USB um, ports and surge protection, how I use them at home. And I take one of those away with me so that I don't have to take in a whole load of adapters for the hotel room that I end up in, um, which has invariably got not enough power out sockets for me and all the stuff that I have to charge up at the end of the day. And wireless mics. Yeah, wireless mics to just get a little bit better audio uh, rather than having to take a whole rig with a, with a wired mic and all the rest of it. So wireless mics still probably aren't as good 
as a wired mic, but you know, if you want to shell out, the DJI mics are pretty good. I find these okay, the Flame uh, X5s. I'm thinking about upgrading from these even. Um, so we'll see what's this space. If you've got any ideas of wireless mics that you think I should try, let me know. All right, it's a bit quiet on the chat today. Not so many people here. And we finished up with AI and me talking about audio pen and the video review that I've got coming up with that in a little while. All right, well, I think we're probably gonna wind it up there then for today. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you enjoy this on replay. Um, I'm gonna go and have another cup of coffee uh, once I finish this tea. And I've got a video that I'm finishing off, which is gonna come out tomorrow. And that is on a basic starter for the Ace Pro. If you've just got it, you've been mucking around with it and you're like, this is great, but I wanna learn how to use it a little bit better and understand the video modes a little bit better. It's a short six minute video that helps you to get your head around the Ace Pro. So Ace Pro settings is coming out tomorrow, audio pen later on in the week. Look forward to those videos, I hope. And I look forward to catching up with you again soon. Next live stream I'm gonna do is probably just before I go to Japan and I will run through what I'm taking with me in my bag to Japan at that point. That will probably be on a roundabout. Uh, let me just check the diary. Let's see, it will probably be, check my content calendar. Mm, 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 mm. February the 11th is what I've got posted in here. So I'll see you then. Catch you again soon, everyone. See you, Tech Packers. Take care out there.